Hey, hey, it's Donnie A. Today I wanted to talk about the most fun and the most effective way to practice. What if I told you you could work on your rhythm, your timing, your, your lead playing, your scales, your vocals, and your singing all at the same time? Is that something you'd be interested in? Of course it is. We're going to go over in this lesson how you can add a jam section or a solo section to any song that you already know. This is what I do with basically every song that I play. I, when I'm plugged in, I like to add a jam section in and work on my scales, work on my soloing. What we're going to do is if you take a song, you usually have like a verse, a chorus, verse, chorus. There may be a solo in it. There may not be a solo in it. If there is, you can learn that solo note for note and do this method, or you can you can work on your scales, work on your improvising, come up with something on your own in place of that solo and input it into a song. But I do this when I play live. I do this when I play by myself. I have my pedal board. I have a looper pedal on it. That's the most important thing you need. Obviously, it helps if you have other pedals like overdrive and whatever, but you don't need those. What you really need is a looper pedal. So we take that chord progression that we have and that song structure that we have and in this instance i'm going to use flake by jack johnson there's a very short solo in that recorded version what we're going to do is just throw away the end of that song and we're going to make this song our own by adding a jam in so when you look at this song you have your verse your chorus your second verse your second chorus then it goes into short instrumental solo and then the end of this song kind of changes keys so we're just going to wipe that away and what we're going to do is we're going to add a jam section of our own so we're kind of making this song our own and you can do this with any song that you have we're going to take the the second chorus and then after the second chorus we're going to insert a jam we're going to look at the chords of this song and decide what we want to solo over do we want to solo over the verse or do we want to solo over the chorus? So the verse goes D minor to F to B flat to F. That seems like it'd be pretty cool to solo over. What's the chorus in this song? Well, the chorus starts on F, then it goes to C, then it goes to D minor, goes to A, B flat, to C, to F. There's a lot in that chorus, and that's, that can be kind of complicated, especially if you're just starting with this, so I think we should use the verse. And the number one thing you need to be able to do, and what this is great with, is you need to be able to figure out what key your song is in so you know what scales to use over it. If you don't if you don't know, you start with the chords, all right, you have a D minor, you have an F, you have a B flat, and then you have an F again. So you know you have two Fs, so just start in that thought process, okay, it's it's probably in F. There's two ways to figure out what what key you're in that I like to use, and they're gonna get you 90% of the way there. The first thing I like to use is your relative major and minor. If you look at the chord progression, do you have a relative major and a relative minor within that chord progression? In this instance, we already are focused on an F and we have a D minor. If you look at the relative minor of F major, which you can find by finding an F note on your, on your low E string or on any string, if we go up to the 13th fret, I'm doing that because on the first fret you can't go any lower than that. But if you start on the 13th fret and you go, if you go up or you go down, I should say, you go down three frets, that gives you your relative minor. So they're a minor third away from each other. If you don't know what that note is on the 10th fret, you can check out this lesson I have on learn all the notes on your fretboard. So your D is your relative minor. Okay, we have an F, we have a D minor it started out with. So we're even more convinced that it's an F major. Another thing you can do just to make sure is the other chord is a B flat. So if you have a B flat, you need to figure out well, what would that be in the key of F. And if you use, if you go look at this other lesson I have, doing a lot of plugs here, then you can use this, you can use this shape 
you can use that shape to find your one, four, fives anywhere on the neck. So if you have a one and that's your F, well, right below it is always your four. So you know that's a B flat. Okay, it's B flat. We know we're an F. And you can use this method to basically take any song and then you can start figuring out what key you're in. And as you do that more and more, it's gonna become quicker and quicker. You're gonna know right away that this song is an F. So you can use the F major scale or the D minor scale for this. We're gonna use the F major pentatonic or the D major pentatonic, which would be down on your, starting on your 10th fret, you'd have 10, 13, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 13, 10, 13. We're not gonna use that form one. If you're doing this lesson on an acoustic, it's gonna be hard to get up this high since this is this is a, a acoustic song typically, even though I'm playing it on an electric guitar. What we're gonna use is the form three and form four of the pentatonic scale. If you don't know those, we'll go over them quick. You have the form three would be three, five, three, five, three, five, two, five, three, six, three, five. We're gonna stay in the, for the most part, we're gonna stay in the lower register of this, which would be the, the E, A, and D string. So three, five, three, five, three, five. Then the form four would be five, eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, six, eight, five, eight. These work great together, the form three and form four. You can always find your form four because your your relative minor uh, with the fifth string rooted bar chord is sitting right on top of that form four. That's a nice tip to know. We're gonna use that for this. And how you would do this, I'm not gonna sing through the entire song because it's it's just a lot of wasted time, but you would play through your, you would play through your first verse, you would play through your chorus, you would play through your second verse, your second chorus, then you would insert a jam, and then however you want to finish it, we're going to finish it by adding a third chorus in to just show you what you can do. So this song would, would go, if we're going from the uh, end of the second verse into the chorus, and then we're going to go into the jam. Maybe she'll help me to untie this Until then, well, I'm gonna have to lie to who It seems to me there may be Pretty much always means no So don't tell me You might just let it go Oftentimes we're lazy It seems to stand in my way Cause no one, no, not no one likes to be let down So I, I put the loop on as soon as the chorus ended into the verse. You could you could wait, go into your verse for you know a full bar and then do it. And then you know get a feel of it, throw on an overdrive pedal, then play around with a pentatonic over it.
Then you kick off your overdrive, get back into the chords. Kick off the looper pedal. And to get back into the feel of the song, you may just need to run through it a little bit. It seems to me that maybe Pretty much always means no So don't tell me You might just let it go And often times we're lazy It seems to stand in my way This is the most effective way to practice, in my opinion, because you get to work on everything at the same time, and you get to play songs and have fun while you're doing it. You're not just working on technique. You're not just working on your scales. You're not just working on licks. You're incorporating it in real music, in real time, and you get to work on everything. And I think this is going to be the closest thing to playing with other people to get you to improve your guitar playing. Highly recommend it. If you like this lesson, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.